Satellite imagery from early 2024 revealed something the world wasn't supposed to see yet. The skeletal frame of what appears to be China's Type 004 aircraft carrier, a vessel so massive that initial assessments placed its displacement at 115,000 tons, exceeding even America's Ford-class supercarriers. The speculation had been building for years. By 2023, whispers of a fourth Chinese carrier, this time nuclear-powered, circulated through defense circles, met largely with skepticism. The doubters had a compelling argument. It took the United States nearly four decades to transition from its first conventional carrier to its first nuclear-powered one. China had been in the carrier game for barely two decades. The math didn't seem to add up. Yet here we are. The United States needed 38 years between launching its first conventional carrier in 1922 and commissioning the USS Enterprise, its first nuclear carrier, in 1960. China commissioned the Liaoning, its first carrier, a refurbished Soviet hull, in 2012. The domestically built Shandong followed in 2017. The Fujian, featuring electromagnetic catapults, launched in 2022 three carriers in just over a decade. Now, intelligence suggests a fourth is taking shape, and this one might fundamentally alter the balance of naval power. The progression seems almost impossibly fast. When China announced plans for a fourth carrier shortly after the Fujian's launch in 2022, even domestic military enthusiasts dismissed it as propaganda. American intelligence agencies reported construction had actually begun in 2021, with projected launch dates between 2026 and 2027. Still, few believed Beijing could master nuclear propulsion this quickly. The technological leap felt too dramatic, too compressed. But 2024 brought a cascade of evidence that changed the conversation entirely. First came the satellite photographs. Commercial imaging satellites captured the construction site, revealing a hull comparable in dimensions to the USS Gerald R. Ford, currently the world's most advanced carrier. Then American media outlets reported on Chinese testing facilities for ship-based nuclear reactors. The specifications leaked 10 meters in diameter, 15 meters tall, with performance parameters perfectly suited for carrier installation. By year's end, a major Chinese shipbuilding corporation displayed a scale model of the Type 004. Sharp-eyed observers noticed something crucial. No exhaust stacks, no chimneys. On a conventional carrier, these structures are unavoidable. They vent the massive diesel or gas turbine engines. Their absence tells you everything. This vessel runs on nuclear power. The implications ripple outward like waves from a stone dropped in still water. Nuclear propulsion transforms what an aircraft carrier can do. A conventional carrier, even fully fueled, has a maximum range of roughly 22,000 kilometers before it needs replenishment. That's substantial, but it's finite. A nuclear carrier, after refueling its reactor, can travel up to 2 million kilometers, the equivalent of circling Earth 50 times. The vessel becomes effectively unlimited in range, constrained only by the human needs of its crew and the mechanical limits of its other systems. This endurance fundamentally changes naval strategy. Conventional carriers require a constant logistics tail, oilers, supply ships, the vulnerable infrastructure of resupply. Nuclear carriers sever that dependency. They can operate for months in distant waters without returning to port without vulnerable refueling operations, without the complex choreography of underway replenishment. They become true instruments of power projection, capable of sustained operations anywhere on the planet's surface. Currently, only two nations operate nuclear carriers, the United States with 11 and France with one, the Charles de Gaulle. If China succeeds with the Type 004, it joins this exclusive club as the third member. More significantly, it signals that China has mastered one of the most complex engineering challenges in modern warfare. The specifications emerging from analysis of satellite imagery and leaked information paint a picture of a vessel designed to compete directly with America's best. 
Military analysts estimate the Type 004 at approximately 335 meters in length and 83 meters in beam. For context, the USS Ford measures 337 meters long and 78 meters wide. The Chinese carrier's flight deck could accommodate more than 80 aircraft, a air wing comparable to or larger than American carriers currently deploy. The displacement figures are even more striking. Estimates place it at 115,000 tons versus 112,000 tons for the Ford. These aren't marginal differences. They suggest China isn't just catching up. It's building carriers designed to match or exceed the current global benchmark. The visible layout suggests three aircraft elevators, two on the starboard side forward of the island superstructure, one on the port side aft. This configuration optimizes aircraft movement between the hangar deck and flight deck, reducing the time needed to launch and recover aircraft during sustained operations. Speed matters in carrier operations. The faster you can cycle aircraft, launch strikes, recover them, rearm and refuel, launch again, the more combat power you generate. Four electromagnetic catapults appear integrated into the flight deck design. This technology represents a generational leap from steam catapults. Electromagnetic systems are more efficient, require less maintenance, can launch heavier aircraft with greater precision, and, you know, reduce stress on airframes. China demonstrated this technology successfully on the Fujian. Its inclusion on the Type 004 was expected. What's remarkable is how quickly China progressed from zero electromagnetic catapult experience to operationalizing the technology on successive carriers. The reactor performance specifications, if accurate, are equally impressive. Reports suggest the Type 004's nuclear plant will generate 125 megawatts of power. 25 megawatts more than the reactors aboard America's Nimitz-class carriers. That additional power enables more energy-intensive systems, advanced radar arrays, electromagnetic catapults operating at higher tempos, directed energy weapons if China chooses to integrate them, and, well, enhanced computer systems for battle management. Power is possibility. More power means more options. The Type 004 won't operate alone. Chinese naval doctrine emphasizes integrated battle groups. The Type 055 cruiser, one of the world's most capable surface combatants, will likely form the defensive perimeter. These vessels carry hypersonic anti-ship missiles with ranges exceeding 1,500 kilometers, creating a massive no-go zone around the carrier. Modern carrier operations rely on layered defense submarines below, destroyers and cruisers around the perimeter, airborne early warning aircraft overhead, and fighter combat air patrols ready to intercept threats. The Type 004 sits at the center of this protective bubble, launching the strikes while escorts handle defense. This rapid advancement has not gone unnoticed in Washington. American naval planners have watched China's carrier program with increasing concern. The dismissive attitude of a decade ago, when Western observers questioned whether China could build a functioning carrier at all, has evaporated. In its place, recognition that China has compressed what took the United States decades into a remarkably short time frame. Consider the timeline. The Ford-class program began in the 1990s. The first vessel was commissioned in 2017, decades and billions of dollars later, plagued by technical problems that took years to resolve. China observed, learned, and appears to be incorporating lessons from both American successes and failures. The Type 004 may benefit from being designed after watching the Ford's troubled development, allowing Chinese engineers to avoid known pitfalls. As of 2024, there are 30 aircraft carriers operating worldwide. The United States uh, fields 11 nuclear carriers, more than the rest of the world combined. This dominance has really underpinned American naval strategy since World War II. Carriers provide the ability to project air power anywhere, anytime, without needing permission to use foreign air bases.
They are, in effect, mobile sovereign territory, miniature air bases that can steam wherever they're needed. The Ford class was supposed to extend this dominance well into the 21st century. Commissioned in 2017 after years of development, the USS Gerald R. Ford incorporated revolutionary technologies, electromagnetic catapults, advanced arresting gear, new radar systems, a redesigned island superstructure, weapons elevators, and improved damage control systems. It represented the cutting edge of carrier design, the most expensive warship ever built at over $13 billion. But now, that technological edge may be narrowing. If the Type 004 matches, or even exceeds Ford class capabilities while costing substantially less, since Chinese construction costs are generally lower than American equivalents, it represents both a technical and economic challenge to U.S. naval supremacy. The implications go far beyond a single ship. They suggest that China has achieved a level of technical sophistication and industrial capacity that can compete directly with American naval engineering. But China isn't stopping at just one nuclear carrier. Reports indicate a fifth carrier, designated Type 005, is already under construction at Jiangnan Shipyard in Shanghai. This means China is building two nuclear carriers at the same time, a construction tempo we really haven't seen since the height of American naval expansion decades ago. Both vessels appear to share the same basic design, over 100,000 tons displacement, four electromagnetic catapults, all configured for advanced carrier aircraft. The air wing projected for these carriers represents, well, another leap forward. The J-35, China's carrier-capable stealth fighter, is designed to operate from electromagnetic catapults. This aircraft competes directly with the F-35C that equips American carriers. Beyond that, reports suggest China is developing a sixth-generation fighter, tentatively called the J-36, that could eventually deploy aboard carriers. If that's true, China would field carrier-based aircraft comparable to or even more advanced than anything currently at sea. Leaked imagery of the Type 005 shows a full-length straight deck, abandoning the ski jump ramp that characterized earlier Chinese carriers. And this design choice really matters. Ski jump ramps allow aircraft to launch without catapults but limit takeoff weight and reduce launch rates. A flat deck with catapults enables heavier aircraft carrying more fuel and weapons to launch more rapidly. It's the configuration every major carrier navy has converged on because, honestly, it maximizes operational flexibility. American analysts now project China could operate 10 carriers with significant aviation combat capability by 2030. That's just six years away. If this timeline holds, China would field a carrier force second only to the United States in numbers and potentially comparable in capability. The global maritime power structure, dominated by the U.S. Navy since 1945, would face its most serious challenge in generations. This isn't just about ships, it's about what those ships enable. Carriers represent the ultimate power projection tool, the ability to bring devastating military force to bear anywhere on Earth within days. Their diplomatic instruments, military tools, and strategic assets rolled into one floating city. Their presence in a region sends unmistakable messages. They can support allies, deter adversaries, conduct humanitarian operations, evacuate civilians from danger zones, or launch combat operations. They're the Swiss Army knife of military power. For decades, only the United States could deploy this capability globally and sustain it indefinitely. That monopoly is ending. China's expanding carrier fleet represents a fundamental shift in how naval power is distributed globally. It suggests Beijing is serious about protecting its interests beyond its immediate coastlines, in the Indian Ocean, perhaps in the Mediterranean, certainly throughout the Western Pacific. The strategic implications are profound. The United States Navy has structured itself around the assumption that American carriers can operate with relative impunity in international waters. 
Chinese carriers, protected by their own escorts and shore-based assets, change that calculus. Areas once considered permissive environments for American naval operations become contested. The Western Pacific, in particular, transforms from an American lake into a space where two peer competitors maneuver for position. This competition extends beyond hardware. It's about industrial capacity, technical expertise, resource allocation, and strategic vision. China has demonstrated it can design, build, and field increasingly sophisticated carriers on an accelerating timeline. Each successive vessel incorporates lessons from its predecessors. The learning curve is steep, but China is climbing it faster than most observers thought possible. The nuclear propulsion breakthrough matters most. Conventional carriers are formidable, but they're tethered to logistics. Nuclear carriers roam free. They can surge to crisis zones and remain there for months without support. They can transit between theaters rapidly without worrying about fuel consumption. They represent a military capability that only a handful of nations have ever achieved. China joining this club changes the game. It signals that Beijing possesses not just the engineering knowledge to build nuclear carriers, but the supporting industrial base, the skilled workforce, the regulatory framework for handling naval nuclear propulsion, and the operational experience to employ these vessels effectively. These aren't simple achievements. They require decades of investment, institutional knowledge, and sustained political will. The pace of development suggests all these elements are now in place. From a refurbished Soviet carrier in 2012 to potentially two nuclear supercarriers under construction simultaneously by 2024, that's not incremental progress. That's a strategic decision to compete directly with the United States for naval supremacy, backed by the resources and capability to make it reality. American naval dominance, unchallenged since the Cold War ended, now faces a peer competitor with the industrial might and technical sophistication to build a rival fleet. The comfortable assumption that the United States Navy would always maintain overwhelming superiority is being tested by concrete and steel taking shape in Chinese shipyards. The Type 004 and Type 005 carriers aren't just ships. They're statements of intent, declarations that China intends to be a global naval power, capable of projecting force wherever its interests demand. Whether those interests align with or challenge existing international norms will define maritime security for decades to come. The era of uncontested American naval dominance may be ending, and the hull taking shape in Chinese waters is where the new era begins.